Hi, this is Shadi, and today we will be discussing Nogi Japanese Jiu Jitsu depictions. Um, this has been, uh, I would say, a very beautiful quest for uh, knowledge. I was actually looking for old uh, throws that are found in mother schools of uh, Judo, like Tenjin Shinyoriyu and Kitoriyu, and you, the things that you would find while looking for Koryu. Uh, content i would say or koryu literature is just simply amazing so today um it wouldn't have been possible without the help of eric shahan the translator of the uh, shinobu books and also the book jujitsu 1913 which is a translation of the tiger scrolls uh, i will leave a link for his uh, books in the description below so i was actually looking for tenjin shinyoriyu throws and depictions and he actually referred me to the national diet library which i will leave a link in the description below so today we'll be looking at the tenjin tetsu shinyuryu jujitsu secret illustrations um i believe i've shown these uh, illustrations before here you see the ude shigi of tenjin shinyuryu and of course the side uh, control when i was discussing uh, kanos neiwaza the guard uh, etc however i did a mistake and uh, i'm gonna make it very clear and clear it out for you um, i've also shown these particular uh, depictions here this one the do jime and of course the hadaka uh, jime however um, that's not to say that these techniques uh, i'm sorry the Dojime and this one here is actually from the book of today, Nandi Tenjin Shinyoryu. So that's not to say that they aren't existent in the Tenjin Shinyoryu uh, curriculum because uh, let me show you a few things. So uh, this is from today's book, the Tenjin Tetsu Shinyoryu Jujitsu. You would see here Sukui Ashi, Harai Goshi, Dojime, Ashi Harai, uh, and many others. Uh, this is the Randori section of the book. Um, you can pause and read it because it's a very important uh, piece. Uh, the next one here is you would see Mataharai or the Osotogari, the Ude Shigi, um, and of course other techniques. So, however, I do have a Tenjin Shinyoryu book, which is the uh, Tenjin Shinyoryu Gokui Kyoju Zukai. This one here is the Randori section. You can pause. I, there's no illustrations. Uh, however, you can see the list of the techniques and they're all there. The Sukui Ashi, the Ashi Harai, the Dojime, Ude Shigi, the Armbar, Hadaka Jime. So uh, I would say the Tenjin Shinryu has actually more techniques within the Randori curriculum. So I've conflated two books, the Tenjin Shinryu and the Tenjin Tetsu Shinryu in the past. And I apologize. I made uh, a mistake now let's get on with the video the first one here you would see they're not wearing anything they're just wearing the shorts uh, on the upper side you would see like a, a sukumen iriminage where blocking the foot and pushing extending the arm and pushing him backwards the other one is actually trying to grab him on the bottom side you would see like a side control and also you would see uh, i might be mistaken but it might look like a neck crank i'll reach out to Eric once again for the translation. He's actually translating these books. So uh, you would see here that they are depicted also naked, not just with the hakama and the jacket uh, grappling. So here, the first one uh, the on the upper right, it looks like something like this. Uh, in schools, it's called kokyonage or breath throw. In other schools, it's called sukumen irimi nage. Um, it's, I would say this is a very functional throw because it requires very little energy. It requires um, a lot of good positioning uh, and you know being very low and really overwhelming the opponent and then projecting them. Now, let's continue. Here you see, for example, on the right side, you would see them, they're wearing their clothes and on the left side, they're actually naked. You would see the arm bar, I'm sorry, you would see the rear naked choke with the gable grip on the uh, lower left side. So to depict them uh, both naked and closed, it would seem that this is a normal part of their training. For example, if you see old judo books, they're all just wearing the uh, dogi and that's it. So that's the only way of training. Now, if I'm making a BJJ archive of photos, it's going to be a mix of gi, uh, rash guard and gi. So I would say this is a normal part of their training. Let's take a look at 
uh, here for example this one the rear naked choke where you're actually cupping the bicep this is Hadaka uh, Jimmy and at the same time there is this one he's not wearing any clothes and he's doing like a gable uh, grip or he's grabbing his uh, own wrist and choking. Let's see it more in action so you would know what I'm talking about. So this is the what is called gable grip and you choke, you take your I would say wrist bone and shove it into the trachea, choking them, not strangling them. Um, you're not cutting the blood flow, you're just trying to put pressure on the trachea while this one here you're actually restricting blood flow by cupping the bicep and um, restricting the carotid arteries. Let's go a little bit more into the grips. Um, in Nage no Kata, you would see here, this one is explained as a demonstration of old jujitsu stance and grips. Uh, you are seeing them in a jigotai or a low defensive stance. And at the same time, they're not gripping sleeve and lapel, but rather they're doing your traditional clinch or over and under hook and continuing with Sutemi Waza here in particular the Sumi uh, Gaeshi. So um, I would say the no gi or no jacket or even if they trained with the kimono before the invention of the dogi um, in the Meiji era I would say it has been a part of their training they trained I would say it's very I would say easy to come to the conclusion that they trained in both naked and closed naked training has been around for even before the closed grappling like sumo and then the mawashi came or the belt but even before that it was just all naked training um i've talked about sumo very recently actually uh, i was talking about the it's the missing link for judokas in the stand-up particularly the fighting range of the close range because um i don't know about you but very rarely our sensei would say take off your jacket and i would take it off or when i'm in open mat and i'm doing nogi with someone stand up i would actually take off and without the jacket they would seem like a million uh, light years away so the gripping becomes far more complicated just like neil adams said um, when the wrestler put on his jacket i was able to just destroy him but when we took off the jacket he mauled me as he said um, now when it comes to no gi um, a lot of people say you know this is the future um, you know explosive dynamic submission grappling the gi is a lot of people find it very boring um, not not as dynamic too much friction so a lot of people tend to hover more towards grappling no gi 10th planet uh, Danaher death squad type of training um, so, but now I would say you can see that it is the both the inception or the past and also it can be the future however my opinion is um, you need a bit of everything um, in my recent sumo video I said you know judokas can benefit from training a little bit of sumo to understand that uh, range of training the clinch uh, that close particular because the kumikata you are still relatively somewhat far away and you are using the grips and overly reliant on the gripping the gi in my opinion uh, also uh, however this one is not the same as sumo obviously this one um, the wrestling is barely there the stand-up wrestling but the the focus is mainly on tapping someone out staying uh, on the ground attacking the legs taking the back um, not so much stand up if you train this alone obviously it's not going to be complete as a grappler and if you train judo alone it's not going to be complete as a grappler i think we all know this by now however um, as pedro valente said they are expressions of the same uh, art uh, it's not so much of this is better this is worse um, i think we should try to see them as pieces of the same uh, puzzle so if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. I will leave a link for the National Diet Library a book and also a link of Eric Shahan's collections of translated old Koryu books. And also, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only. And also, don't forget to check out Josh Simon's shop in the description. This was Shadi. And as always, thank you for listening.